The first ever sanctioned race in NASCAR history was a modified race. The first day of the weekend activities was devoted to the modified stock event. On that fateful day on the beach in Daytona, drivers were allowed to modify their passenger cars for better race performance. Passenger cars? Yeah, right. Tonight, these 600 horsepower open wheel behemoths are ready to tear off the quarter mile bull ring at one of the oldest tracks in the country, Riverhead Raceway. We drop the green flag on NASCAR on Versus right now. presents the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour, coming to you this evening from the Riverhead Raceway in Riverhead, Long Island, New York, scene of the Riverhead 200 this evening. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Arud, and welcome to Versus coverage of the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. Now, if you're from the East Coast, you know what modifieds are, but if you're watching somewhere else around the country, it's not the NASCAR you're used to. But there is a common thread. While the cars may be different, drivers like Tony Stewart, like Ryan Newman, like Dale Earnhardt Jr. They have a passion. Well, so do these drivers. And in fact, the passion by these drivers may be just a tad higher because with that passion, they put their pride on the line every Saturday night. Now, what about the cars? They're a lot different as well. And for more on that, we're joined as my color analyst, a two-time national modified champion. They call him Mr. Excitement. He went on to NASCAR Sprint Cup stardom, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy? These are awesome race cars, Jackie. They bring back so many memories for me. The big tires, the spoilers, the skid rails. As you see, the driver's cockpit here is strapping in the car. But most of all, Jackie, a lot of horsepower. But the key to this racetrack, I believe, is my best friend, this bumper. Thanks, Jimmy. I think you're right. We're going to see a lot of these drivers use your best friend tonight. Now, let's join our third member of our squad, Kelly Stavitz, who's standing by and will be covering pit road. But right now, she's with the pole sitter for tonight's race. Kelly? Well, Jack, this is really my first time getting up close and personal with these modified cars. And what I really love about it is the atmosphere in the pits. These guys aren't here to get rich and famous. They're here for bragging rights. And because modified racing is in their blood, in fact, we have second and third generation modified drivers out here. One of them happens to be our pole sitter, George Brunholzer III. And George, everyone talks about how important track position here is at Riverhead. So how can you take advantage of your spot here tonight? Well, it is. It's very important here. So hopefully we can take advantage of it and just uh, keep the, uh, the oval speed, Cape Cut aggregates, JNR precast 46 out front. Well, Jack, he's the reigning Southern Modified Tour champion looking to make his mark here in New York. It's Kelly. For 37 years, the Riverhead Raceway has been run by Barbara and Jim Cromerty. For the most famous words in motorsports, Barbara and Jim Cromerty. Drivers, Drivers start, start your, your engines. Engine. Over 50,000 horsepower rumbles to life a 28 car starting field if you've never seen a modified race before you don't need to take notes the key tonight jackie do you want to pit some guys are saying no 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 we'll find out next The field is fired. The entire 28 car starting grid is underway in their preliminary pace laps. Taking a look 
at the current wheel and modified tour standings, Jimmy. Bobby Santos, who lit the house on fire early on, but since Lime Rock Park has gone winless, he's being chased down by Ted Christopher. Christopher, who was the winner most recently on a quarter mile racetrack, hit Monadnock Speedway in New Hampshire. And the thing here, the seven time champ, Mike Stefanik, right there, not that far, less than 150 points behind. And we also got this Brian Priest, young guy, three. We see how many times this car's won these championships. So you know, Jackie, this is going to be a tight battle all the rest of the year. What about the weather? It's perfect for modified racing. It'll build high horsepower, low humidity, virtually no wind, and you got to like that temperature at 68 degrees. These cars will hum and sing around this quarter mile. Let's take a look at the track facts about the Riverhead Raceway. You like this racetrack, Jimmy Spencer. <laughs> well, I like me to see that a quarter mile. How do you race with 28 race cars on a quarter mile? Plus, it's banked, and it's built in 1949, Jackie. See, this is an old racetrack, and it's got a lot of character. Well, all you got to do is look at what's up for grabs this evening, and you know how they race on a quarter mile. $53,000 up for grabs. Ryan Priest, who finds himself starting in the, the third position, the defending champion at age 19 in the Bowler family number three that's been so famous for so many years. You, you bring a great point up, but you know, look at this guy here, uh, Justin uh, Bossignor. Bossignor. This guy here, local guy, rookie on the tour, outside pole. I'll tell you what, Jackie, this is a guy, he's got to bring it home for his home fan town fans. And Justin is the focus of my eye on this evening. Okay. He is the guy that I think we need to take a good hard look at. It's Kelly Stavitz, who's the eye on from your perspective? I've got my eye on the number 96, Howie Brody. He's a local Riverhead racer, not a tour regular, but these guys say that this track's really tough to figure out. So that local knowledge and good track position could be a good combination tonight. Grandma, put your teeth in your pocketbook. We're about to go racing Mod Squad style. Pace car pulls off. Green flag is out. We are underway side by side, darting and diving into turn number one. They've stacked them up 12 deep. No one has an advantage down in the three. The key here to this racetrack is to not burn your tires up, not knock your front end out of tow. This is a long race, a lot longer than you think at a quarter mile racetrack. Two young Turks going at it, and Justin Monsignor, the hometown favorite. The youngster has had a lot on his shoulders oh. all month. Action already in turn three and four. They're all going now. No caution. Flag Jackie, incredible. What a great job by the drive. Now we do a caution. The guy did spin out. But Ryan Priest has spun. But that's the good thing on a quarter mile. You spin, you don't hit anything. Now he's got to go to the back of the pack. Everything he earned in time trials has just gone up in flames on the third lap of 175. And here's a guy that was starting up front. Now he has to go all the way to the rear of the field. But you know, Jackie, you got to give the commodities a lot of credit for this racetrack. They've taken paid the inside of the yeah. racetrack. That is important on these racetracks that you don't have a wall to hit. He can continue on tonight, possibly come back. Let's take a look at what happened, Jimmy. Well, you know, they start to stack up, and then we see the two wide races there, and he just gets hit my Here's best friend Lauren, that your bumper. best friend your best friend <laughs> my, already bought my, my best friend the bumper and that's what happens on this racetrack you're going to see this all night long just part of being at riverhead we should point out that the riverhead 200 is comprised of two segments the first segment was earlier this evening a 25 lap qualifying race that filled some of the back positions now the 53 grand up for grabs it's 175 barn burner laps here and jackie the thing about this track and, and you said about 175 laps you're going to have to save some tires. You're, you're not going to see these guys pitting for tires. It's going to be important to save them. All right, Kelly and I have had our eye on a couple of drivers. Who I, do you have on? I have my eye on this number four car. It's driven by Bobby Santos, a great racing family, but most of all, Bob Garbrino. Jackie, you know and I know this guy has supported the NASCAR Modified Series for the longest time. Great drivers drove in this car. Bugsy Stevens, Stash Worley, and just a, a whole slew. What a great team. I, I'm pulling this guy because I just like Bob Garbrino. But you know what? This kid's pretty good, too. All right, give points to my partner, Mr. Excitement. He is correct. Let's reset the field. Five laps have been completed. Justin Bonsignor took the lead on the outside in a nice move down in a turn number one. Impressive move, Jackie. You know, you Very. saw him go into the corner, gave a lot of room, finished the pass at turn three and four, and didn't just cut off. So he, he knows the groove of this racetrack, and he made a payoff. Now we're going to see on the restart, double farm restart. Can he hold on? George Brunhussel III won the poll. He moved back right after he lost that spot, stayed in focus, filled the rearview mirror of Justin Bonsignor with his car. But the move was by Ronnie Silk because Silk and Priest were going at it. Silk takes advantage. He moves to third. Kevin Goodall now moves to fourth. And Eric Rudolph finishes out and fills out the top five. Another youngster making some, of the, you know, making some noise here on what traditionally 
was an old school style yeah. form of sport. A lot of the guys like Evans and Jason back, they got a little long in the tooth, but you could run on short tracks until you were in your mid 40s. I don't ever know what ever happened to you. I guess you just decided you were going to go to work and make some big money. <laughs> no, no I, I missed the modifies when I walked in the racetrack tonight. And, you know, just to, just the memories and looking at these cars. They haven't changed a lot, Jack. And I think for the fans out there that are really watching this over the next few races, we're going to show you a lot more about these cars. The big tires, the brakes, the horsepower. These cars are very unique. And I don't think they ever got the credit. You know, Bobby Allison even said he loved racing these modifies, Jack. And he, let's face it, he's a big time champ. It gets your attention. Let's get another update on what happened with car number three. Kelly? Well, that certainly was not the start that Ryan Priest was looking for in that number three. He told me that he wanted to get out front in the first 25 to 30 laps and control the pace. Now he's talking to a spotter from the back saying, look, you've got to keep your eyes open ahead of me and keep me out of trouble. But hey, he dominated this race last year and he told me he loves these short tracks, so we'll see what happens. So now you're going to have to use that chrome horn, aren't you, Jimmy? He's going to have to, Jack. He's back at 27th. You're going to start seeing this on this restart. These cars are going to start spreading out. You're going to see him take a chance at being become a, a candidate for the leader to put him down a lap. So he's going to have to start being aggressive here. How aggressive can you be, though? You're, you know, you don't want to go crazy. But aggressiveness is just like, okay, you're holding me up. And the chrome horn is mainly used, Jack. And he said, come on, come on. I'm here. I need a little room. Help me. And I think if you don't, if you give the guy room enough of the race, then they're going to race you. They're not going to use it. But the key to the chrome horn, in my opinion, is listen, man, you're holding me up. you got three or four or five car lights between you. We need to get going. That's the difference between being aggressive and, and uh, using common sense. And that's what I was talking about, pride and passion that the Mod Squad they has. They have it. Getting ready to go back to green. Side by side, no, they're going to go an extra lap. The field is getting set to go back to green, and now it'll be interesting as the roles have reversed. Bonsignor is on the inside, and Brunhosel is on the outside. Do you think Brunhosel learned a lesson? I think he could have, but you know, the thing was, was that what we saw with uh, uh, Brunhosel is I don't believe he got off the corner like he needed to. So the 51 has been getting off the corner, but we'll see here they come for the green flag, Jack. Back under green. Side by side and hub to hub. Bonsignor has just a little bit of an advantage. Brun Holzer stays there, Jackie. Look at this. Great, they do great move. Shoot and scoot. And now Brun Holzer tries to tame that demon on the outside. I'll tell you what, to run on the outside here, you've got to be hooked up. And how about this, Jackie? Who would ever believe you could be too wide racing here at River at this small race track? And we're seeing it all the way through the field. Meanwhile, as you go, as you watch the cars, look at that car on the outside. Really starting to make a move is Kevin Goodall in number 50. He is making the outside work. Well, many people are just a little too timid right now. Well, the thing is, is that we're starting to see the outstart come in. We saw uh, Brian Priest, I'm sorry, but Justin Bonsier take the lead on the outside, and these guys all have another spin off of turn two. Everybody gets on the binders quickly. And again, no harm, no foul. We'll find out what happened to Kevin Goodall when we return as you're watching the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour only here on Versus. Welcome back to Riverhead, Long Island. Scene of the Riverhead 200 of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Jack Arute along with Kelly Stavitz and Mr. Excitement next to me here, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy, let's go back and take a look at that spin out of turn number two. We see the 36 there of Christopher slow down a little bit, but the 50 just spins out all by himself. Very interesting, almost like he had a problem with a brake or whatever, and it starts to stack them all up. And we also see two more cars further in the back that get collected, but just lost it by himself, Jack. I don't understand what happened there. Well, a little bump, a little tap. You yeah, know? But, but Teddy might have bumped them a little bit before that, but yet he spun out a lot further in, so I mean, well, that's it, interesting. It, it, it telegraphs it. For the youngster that is running in second place right now, Justin Bonsignor, who has moved into the lead in the 51, Two fourth place finishes during Wheel and Modified Tour races the previous two years gave him the dream ride here in the M3 Special. But for Justin coming home, well, it's put a lot of pressure on him. I finished fourth there two years, 07 and 09 with my equipment, so we're hoping maybe get a little better. We got better equipment this year, better overall deal. So that's the, uh, that's the one circle on all the count at the calendar at the shop right now.
not only has it been circled, but I checked with him and he said he had over 75 people he had to help get in here tonight. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And there and goes the winner's the money. It's, it's enjoyable to see this. Back to green flag racing. Bruno Zell on the outside in the yellow car doing battle with the young gun, a fellow young gun. Monsignor holds on. I got to love this battle side by side, nerf bar to nerf bar. But look who's starting to sniff things around. That's the six and Ronnie Silk. And again, we have a spin. This time it's Renee Dupuy, the only female driver on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, and she's been at it for over a decade. Yeah, and she it looks to me like it was just a single car spin by herself. Jack and these cars run a tremendous amount of rear brake. That also could have happened to the 50 car, could have happened to the 90 car. You use a lot of rear brake because these cars like to be able to get in the corner and be able to rotate. You use brake to help them do that. Let's talk a little. I'm, I'm speculating. That could have not, that might not have been happening, but I'm just thinking that's a possibility of what we're seeing here. But if you say with enough conviction, we can believe it. You can believe that, Jackie. Yeah, just, just go with it. Right, good. Let's talk a little bit of while we got a break in the action. The pavement here. We were trying to describe. It's not that it doesn't have grip, but what running on this racetrack requires is you got to have patience. Yeah. You got to take it inch by inch. That's why I'm so impressed right now with the battle up front. They're running side by side and up to up. That's what that's what impresses me, Jackie, is that even when I was racing here how many years ago and over the years, this track hasn't been paved. Why should you? You have two wide race. The key the key to any racetrack, in my opinion, is to get your car to handle. And what we're seeing right now is cars handling. That's the great thing about Riverhead. How many short tracks do you see in the United States that you can do what you just said, Jackie? Race side by side. And we're seeing it lap after lap. Hey, I heard all the cup guys talking and bemoaning the fact that the Daytona International Speedway yeah. is going to be repaved. They they like to leave it alone. 39 car has gone down on pit road. And that's Rich Pillai Jr., one of the rookie contenders. He really likes this place. He hasn't been here that often, but I told the story before. Richie actually started driving for me in a mini sprint, and his father has never forgiven me because now he's moved up to the big time with the Wheel of Modified Tour. And then his father's probably in there getting his knuckles busted up on the hot brake rotors and working his butt off saying, Jackie, why did you do this to me? <laughs> yeah, we used to be friends. We used to be. We don't exchange Christmas cards anymore. I think we're getting ready to go back to green once again. Watch the second row on this start. You got Goodell on the outside, and you got Ronnie Silk on the inside. They want to find some room to do battle for the lead. <laughs> Bruno and Bonsignor. Bonsignor chose the outside of the air. As I predicted, look who's going to the inside. And, and there is a great move. And I'm a little surprised that Bonsignor took the outside. Bromholzer takes the lead back, and here comes the sixth car of Ron Silk up in the second. Silk, who cut his teeth racing go-karts with Danica Patrick and Sam Hornish Jr., now making a home in the Wheel and Modified Tour, has moved into second. Bonsignor's third place position is being challenged by Kevin Goodall. Goodall gets by to move into the third spot, and that moves Rowan Pennick into the contest for fourth. A little deeper in the field, we see some of the dicing, slicing and dicing back and forth. Top five positions have now settled down a little bit, and the battle is between Eric Rudolph on the inside and on the outside in the 76. That car trying to get some uh, traction is Eric Beers. And now I think what we're starting to see, Jackie, is these guys have got accustomed to what's what, what's in play tonight, and we're starting to see them start to separate, start to pass on the outside, and they're starting to get a little separation, which will allow for a lot more movement, and in turn, we're going to start seeing some separation and possibly some lap cars in a few laps. Taking a look at Eddie Flemke, second generation driver. His dad, the late Ed Flemke, made a name on the eastern, east, eastern seaboard as part of the Eastern Bandits. And now young Eddie is a car builder. And so we go a little a lot of his, A lot of his chassis are in the field tonight. Go a little deeper into the field and look who is starting to come to the front after spinning out. Ryan Priest is already up to 15th place, Jackie, from being all the way back to 27th. Incredible run for him. Ryan Pierce Priest is not afraid to use that favorite friend of yours, the bumper. And well, he is, is he not used it as much as I thought he would. He's elected to try and make his run going up the ladder and on the outside, and so far it's working. It's working really well. Now, he has the car exiting the corner really strong. The key to this racetrack, I said earlier in the show, you can't spin these tires, and he is doing a great job of keeping the tires underneath that car exiting the corner nice and straight. We should say that while Ryan started third, he fell all the way back to 28th. 
after that early race spin. Quick and now, move, right? ooh, did you see that quick move, Jack? Did Jackie? you see that? Just you leave a little opening on a track like this, and damn, there they go. And this is what I like. He's, he's racing right over Jamie Tomato. Now, Jamie, a veteran at this racetrack, a lot of a lot of races ran on short tracks by Jamie. He's not one to fall asleep here. And Jamie's the only one in the field that has raced in every wheel and modified tour race that NASCAR has sanctioned. Absolutely incredible. And Jamie, I was talking to him earlier. I raced with him in in the modifieds when I raced, and it, it, it was so neat just to walk through the garage here and talk to these guys. But we see Priest now. He is still pushing the issue here. He knows he needs to get by these cars. Currently being posted in the 15th position, trying to work his way up to the front. You're loving this, Jimmy. Have you noticed this? Look at these bumpers. This is what's cool about this sport. Look at this. Just a little, hey, hey, I'm here, guys. I'm here. This is what I like. Look at the brake rotors. The heat in the brake rotors. Quarter mile race track. You're going to see a lot of heat from the brakes starting to develop. And drivers don't get short-tempered over being tapped. It, it's part of the sport. They know that when they come here. Not not a racetrack where you say, ah, you know what? I'm going to be a pretty nice guy tonight and just try to finish. No. This is a racetrack. You need to stay on top of the wheel. You need to be aggressive, but you also need to gain their respect. And a little bump is okay. Just don't spin me out. Dale Earnhardt would have loved this. Dale Earnhardt, with Bobby Allison, as I said earlier, these guys love this type of racing because this is just true grassroots racing. Do you remember when Dale Earnhardt and Terry Labonte got into it in Bristol? He said, well, I didn't mean to spin them out. I just wanted to rattle his cage. Hey, you know, I, I finished second that day. I was pretty proud. And I'm going to tell you what. If I could have got Earnhardt, I would have emulated what he said. Rattle the cage. And this is what Priest is doing. He's underneath Jamie Tomato. Now, watch. To the inside fence. Jamie gave him a little bit of room on the outside. There you go. This is the key to this racetrack, Jackie. When a guy gives you enough room, you've got to get in there and you've got to open the door and then you've got to close it. And now you've got to try and figure out how you get around Flimke in the 10 car. Now, oh, he gets back in line. He's going to set Flimke up. Where do you go? Inside again. Take a look at that. He's getting a bite coming off. This is what's interesting to me. Priest's car is really rotating the center and exiting the corner under power. As you see, he's already pulling away from Tomato. Priest has got a strong car, Jackie. I'm impressed that he moved this quickly through the field. Meanwhile, back up front, we are starting to slice and dice through some heavy race traffic. There he goes. Look at that. He passed him, and now we have. Our, now we're seeing some lap traffic here. But we see the priest car go by earlier. Now we're seeing again a lot of lap traffic starting to come into play. So now you're the leader, or you are Justin Bunce and yours having a little bit of a problem getting around Rene Dupuis. How do you use the lap traffic to your advantage? Well, you you have to anticipate. Yes, you're on a short track here, but you have to say, okay, where is this person exiting the corner at? And you have to start looking further ahead. And any race car driver needs to look further ahead, Jackie, so they know where to anticipate their move. Less than one month ago, George Brunhusel III found himself resting in a New Hampshire hospital with a broken sternum and two bruised lungs. Sat out one race, went to Monadnock, and now he is racing, and he told me before this race, fulfilling a dream because this is where he started. He leads the Riverhead 200 here as we have completed, uh, we have completed 34 of 175 laps. Eddie Flemke connects in turn one, and we are under our third caution of the evening. Yep. Back here at the Riverset Riverhead Raceway, we are getting ready to go back to green here, but let's get a quick check-in with Kelly Stavitz on the condition of one of the teams. Well, I'm checking in about Ron Silk. He started six, he's up to second. He told me before the race, the key was to keep his bumper square, let things thin out for a while. But he was here at Riverhead just a couple of weeks ago for a local 100 lap race. He won that race, that was good practice for this race here tonight. He is making the outside work, but Kevin Goodall gets by, and now Silk gets a little high. Got a little bump, I think, from Justin Bonsignor. 
Well, we're seeing the, the bumpers being used an awful lot. That's, no, really? You know, come on now, promoter. We we know that uh, <laughs> we need to put a race on there, and these guys are doing it. But, you know, it's one of them deals, Jackie. It's a quarter-mile racetrack. Not a lot of room. There's two wide racing. But if you're holding me up, i got to get going. And this is what you're seeing, a lot of aggressiveness with the bumper. I love it, baby. It's, it's part of this modified tour. And the thing that isn't over yet, Ryan Priest, the 19-year-old from Berlin, Incredible. Connecticut, has moved into the top ten. A gaggle of cars in front of him. In fact, one guy that he's already locked horns with before, former modified champion in the 16th. Mike Stefanik. And Mike Stefanik was not happy with him at, as a result of a race at Thompson and called out the young Ryan Priest about it. And then the thing is, Jackie, is that this kid, the, you got to give these guys credit. They're coming in. Yes, he's a young kid, but he says, listen, I'm here to race. I was talking to him earlier before race shop time. He says, Jimmy, I'm here to race. I want to do well. Trouble in turn three and four. Todd Zegedy is involved. Ed Flemke is involved. Rene Dupuy is involved. And the 11 car of Chuck Sturr is also involved. A lot of damage to the 90. We see the left rear wheel, they're all bent up. Flemke again involved. And here, she, she has a really bent wheel. And this guy here is broke down. Uh, he looks like he can't get it started. He's trying to get back. He's, he's, he's safe. He's fine in the car, but he, he needs help to get the car. Let's power. take a look at what happened here. Who gets crossed up down into turn number one? Ooh. Oh, there you go. The 88 car just runs the right front into uh, the, I can't remember her name. Rene Dupuis. Rene Dupree. And, Dupuis. And Dupree. And it was not her fault by any means. The 88 car gets into her, causes her to spin out, and collects a bunch of these guys. I'll explain to you how you do Renee's name. Okay. Parlez-vous Francais? Oh, you're a Frenchman now? Chevrolet Coupe. Chevrolet Coupe. Toupe? Toupe. Yes. Okay. You can see the end result, though. A lot For, of uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a local hero. Guy runs here every week uh, in the modified tour. Tour comes into town here for the uh, for the Riverhead regulars. This is a chance to cash in and get some bucks. And and for uh, Stoyer, unfortunately, it's uh, all over because yeah, he. It doesn't look like he's going to get that one repaired. We are under caution yet again. 75 laps. The official halfway mark of the 175 is rapidly approaching. Don't go away because we're going to have it all. Seventy-nine laps are in the record books of the 175 that comprise the final segment of this Riverhead 200. We are expecting a green flag momentarily. The lucky dog has been issued. The pace car, the Racing with Jesus pace car, is now taking the field around. And the fr front running positions have, well, they've shifted just a little bit. Georgie Brunhusel, the third, still holds on to the lead with Kevin Goodale in second spot. And the big question mark is, will Ronnie Silk be able to do the magic fandango on the inside and get up to the front? He's got his hands full, though, with Rowan Pennick. Pennick in the red car working the outside of Silk, and he takes over the position. Your leader is the 50, Kevin Goodale. George Bruno's of the third has dropped back to second. Rowan Pennick has moved to third. Ron Silk is fourth. And Justin Bonsignor rounds out the top five. Starting to do a little single file racing. Bonsignor, though, holding tight on the outside as the 76 starts to challenge him. And, you know, that, that's been a tough road for Eric Beers, but he's made it work. He works the inside, and look who follows him. And, and you're seeing this already with Pierce. You're seeing this with, uh, there's the 36 car of, of Teddy Christopher. Christopher. And what we're seeing, two wide races. Oh! oh. Bonsignor and Christopher get together, coming off a of turn four. Justin Bonsignor. In the 51, gets sideways, and there was an open wheel racing malady. Yeah. You hook a wheel. You hook a wheel, and once you hook a wheel with these cars, just you're on your own. And uh, what happens to Teddy is, is he hooks the wheel, car gets a little free underneath him, but, uh, you know, I think he's back under his power here, Jackie, so I think he'll be safe, but, boy, he had, you know, he went from running in about sixth position now to the last car in the lead lap. And they don't give gold medals in the wheel and modified tour of NASCAR for synchronized spinning. And, you know, Teddy, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> Jackie, here's Teddy. This guy, is this is his style of driving. Be patient, be patient, be patient, and he gets stung here. 
Now watch on the inside. Bonsignor is the one that Bonsignor actually starts. gets it. loose. Bonsignor is the one that causes that wreck. Teddy's safe on the inside. Bonsignor gets a little loose, bumps into Teddy. Teddy's the one that ends up being spun out here. And so many times people like to, you know, Teddy Christopher is kind of the bad boy of yes. racing, although he's been a two-time most popular driver. There's a lot of boo birds. That was not Christopher's fault. No. He was, dare I say, an innocent victim? He, he was in that situation, but you know what? This is what fans, you, you got to appreciate. If you ever get the opportunity to come out here to Long Island, New York, Riverhead, Saturday night, that's what happens here weekly. It's just incredible. So let's see. We've got spins. We've got changes in the lead. Let's get bumper, an update. A lot of bumper loving. And a lot of bumper loving. Let's get an update from Pit Road from Kelly Stavitz. Kelly. Well, I can tell you guys that the 46 car and George Bronhuzel the third was none too pleased about that last restart. He felt like he got a raw deal, said the pace car pulled in front of him last minute, and he had to back off the throttle. He's been pretty amped up on the radio with his father, his crew chief, his dad saying, hey, I know you're upset. I know you just calm down, take your time, we'll get him back. Yeah, his dad, a former NASCAR modified driver as well, who actually created a business that everybody in cup racing uses now. Everybody has a Brunhuzel jacket. What does it weigh, about 12 ounces? It, it, it doesn't <laughs> weigh much, but Jackie was one of those guys. I'm sorry, Jack. Man, I am messing up tonight. I'm so excited. But Georgie was one of those guys, Jackie, that cut his teeth here on, yeah. on Riverhand and, and I slip and, you know, really honed it, but then decided to move south to, to make a living, and he makes the racing, Jack, fans. And uh, if, you, if you've ever saw Sprint Cup in the, in the Wheeling Modified Tour all over the country, you'll see the Brunhuzel jacket. This son, this is the son of the guy that invented that jack. And the son is going to have to get his composure. But here's my feeling, Jimmy. If the pace car's in the way, spin him out. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, Use I, your friend. He, he's mad, and he says the pace car. What the hey? I mean, it's he's, just a he's pace car. vulnerable, and he's holding me up. Hey, you know, we're at Riverhead. We're, we're in a quarter mile. You need to learn pace car driver. Pick the pace up. Yeah, but if he doesn't, wouldn't you spin him out? It, it, it wouldn't be the first time I had a pace car. Amen. Enough said. And it's racing with Jesus, so, you know, I think he'll forgive you for it. You think? <laughs> That's right. Let's reset the field for you, though, on this restart. Kevin Goodale is going to be the driver that will elect to take the inside or the outside. He is elected to take the inside, which moves Brunhuzel III into the outside in the yellow car. Now, you see the four, Bobby Santos. He is going to be the recipient of the lucky dog. This is the technique that NASCAR uses so that they can move him around quickly. When the pace car light goes off, they will wave Bobby Santos of Franklin, Massachusetts in the Garbarino number four around, and he'll take up his position with the lucky dog and be, remain on the lead lap. Which I think is a good rule. You know, NASCAR yeah. come up with that this last few years, and it, it, in turn, it allows the guys to get back into the race and become a factor. And this guy naturally running for the championship is actually leading the points. So this could be a big break for him. I talked to Bobby and asked him what he thought of Riverhead Raceway. First he time said, here. Yeah, and he said, he said, I like it. He says, but what I've really been a little bit frustrated with is that you can't take big chunks. you got to take it little tiny bits at a time. And that's a good point that he brings up, Jackie. And, you know, the thing is, you're, you're running around here in, in a little over 12 seconds a lap, about 12 seconds flat. You, you have to react to it very, very quickly. So you can't make up a half a second, but you can make up a half a tenth. And that's important. Lucky Dog has been given the wave around. Now take a look in the fourth row. Look who's on the outside. Oh, my goodness. Car number three, Ryan Priest, Berlin, Connecticut, in a long time. Bowler family car. That number three is so well known in NASCAR wheel and modified tour history. The late Lenny Bowler with Freddie DeSero and Bugsy Stevens. And now the family continues the tradition with the three. And it's incredible. He is already up to eighth place fans, and he started in last. And Priest has been using the outside. Now the key is he's right behind. Behind Bonsignor, you see the M3 on Bonsignor's rear deck lid. Priest is going to have to use that chrome horn, your best friend, because now everything is going to be fought for, hammer and tong, tooth and nail. And what we're seeing, we're halfway through the race here, Jackie. What we're starting to see is these tires start to get a lot of time on them, and they're starting to do this normal slipping. You're going to see guys that have saved their tires, like like Bonsignor and Pierce, even though that he started, he, he got spread out and went to the rear. Saving the tires is very important as he exits the corners. Watch the 93 on the inside of George Brunhuzel III. Rowan Pennick slipping and sliding, and it looks like, yes, the groove has moved up just a bit. And if you leave the door open like that for a kid like Ronnie Silk in the six, he'll strike. And he struck right there on Brumholzer. And, and in turn, what we're seeing now, Brumholzer is in a vulnerable position. On the outside, he's, he, he did seem to like the inside all night long. And here's Pierce coming up, too. 
Oh, yes. that was, now let me tell you something. Oh, well, Ron Stokes, you know what? I need a little more room here. Did you notice that one? <laughs> Excuse me, mind if I play through with I, a bulldozer? I think that's what he did there. And now we're starting to see the, the, the track starting to, to really get some time on it. The tires get some time on it. And you're seeing more and more slippage than you've ever seen. And here, Kevin Goodson, Goodson Dale is starting to actually start to opening up uh, a little bit of a lead, Jack. But the leader at this point, the likelihood that it'll be the winner at the end in 175 laps in short track bull ring racing, don't bet on it. Very highly unlikely. I'll tell you, you know, what we see here, these guys are starting to stretch out. What will happen? Lap traffic again. And this is what I love about Riverhead. You're turning 12 second laps, you're going to start catching your friends mighty quickly and you get to use your friend the big bumper it's it's one of the things that i think is pretty neat about the modifieds and they haven't changed over the years they have a lot of availability to lean and shove on your friends with the side rails with the rear bumpers and things like that the old cliche put a nerf bar to him was born and raised as teddy christopher starts to work over and tattoo jamie tomato i like where where Teddy Christopher was until that last caution. This is the battle right now for Christopher trying to get back to the front. He was running pretty good and then he dropped back to his deepest 17th in the field. And now he is being shown in that 17th spot. He's gonna have to start to make some time if well, he wants to be a playoff in this one in the end. He has lost a lot, Jackie. And you know, this is really, time is starting to be an issue. We're almost at uh, 65 laps to go. And the thing is, is he's gonna have to have that lucky dog, Jackie. Well, and the key was he got spun when Bonsignor lost control of the car. No, you know, no running in the to top him. five. Running in the top five. So Christopher's got to exhibit a little bit of patience, but has to feel the sense of urgency right now as well. And, and you know, the thing about Pierce, Pierce was lucky. He quite, he did get spun out. He was running in third field. He got spun out in the first 10 laps. So he had a lot more time to make a, up his lost track track position versus what uh, Teddy Christopher has. So young Kevin Goodall, Goodale is leading. Rowan Pennick is in second. Ron Silk is third. Justin Bonsignor is fourth. And Ryan Priest fills out the top five. Back under green flag conditions here at the Riverhead 200 in Riverhead, New York, here on versus the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. And the bubble has burst. The clock has struck 12 for Kevin Goodale. He has faded to fourth. Meanwhile, Rowan Bennett has taken up the charge in the lead in the number 93. But look who is knocking, tapping, using his good friend. Yeah, that's right. Ryan Priest from worst to one away from being first yet again. An early spin, and he has battled his back, battled his way all the way back. Now to run in second place. Ronnie Silk is in in the third position. Kevin Goodale, after leading, is now in fourth. What's interesting is you said it about Priest going to the rear of the field. He was at eight at eighth lap. He was third. He went all the way to the rear of the field. Jackie has worked his way back up to second. Not a lot of time with 152 laps complete. He is really working over the bumper of Rowan Pennick. Pennick, as we said, hailing from Pennsylvania. He is out front in the 93, but the, the, the command performance thus far as we start to get ready to work some race traffic has been Young Priest, who was the defending race champion here at Riverhead Raceway. He lost the pole position tonight to George Brunozzo III, but the likelihood of him being a repeat champion in the Riverhead 200 starting to look a little bit better. And, you know, Jack, you happen to agree with you, he's really... Looking, as you see now, he's going in high, going in low. He is trying to figure a way past this car. He's not used to chrome horn yet. He's just decided that it's time to just, I'm going to work this guy as hard as I can. In an open competition race over the week in uh, Seekonk, Massachusetts, everybody was making fun because because uh, Ryan drove another car, and about halfway through the race, the car just it, it went to crap. No other way to put it. We all told him that he laid down in the seat. <laughs> so everybody was making fun of him tonight, and he says, well, you just wait and see when I get to Riverhead. Well, he came, I saw, and I'm impressed. He, he is very impressed tonight. Uh, impressed me tonight with just his tenacity all right. of keeping after here's, this car. Here's, here's the race traffic. Now, you're Rowan Pettick. Big, this is big, How yeah. do you use the moving pick? Rowan, if, if Rowan makes a wrong pick here, Priest will jump to the inside and outside of him in a heartbeat. This is what I love about Riverhead. And look at, already, see him closing in the gap. So, Rowan has to, look at this, this is this lap traffic, Wade Cole right here, trying to pick, he finally gets to the outside. Priest not at all backing off. Jackie, you stand really, really 
it close. Now you timing were, is critical, Jack. Yeah, and you were a master because what you want to do is you want to come up on that lap traffic at the optimum point on the racetrack, wherever that might be. Timing is very important. You bring a great point up there, Jackie. And the reason why, if you catch that car entering the corner at the wrong point, are you going to get pushed up with it, or are you going to have to go underneath it? That is going to be the decision that, that Rowan has to make. He's doing a great job right there, holding Perry soft. Richie Pillai Jr., one of the rookie contenders, a lap down. He was in the pits, had some serious repairs in the front end. Now he is about to be overtaken yet again by the lead duo. Both of them get by, but here's where it's going to get a little dicey because as they start to come into some of this other traffic, if I'm not mistaken, that looks like it might be, yes, Teddy Ted Christopher. Christopher directly in front of him who benefited and got back on the lead lap, but he's about to go a lap down again. And here's the 31 of Tony Ferrante. He actually moves over, gives uh, Rowan uh, uh, all the room he needs. But, but Priest has to be very biting at the tooth and nails right now. I mean, he is really gritting them teeth after this car. Two open palms by the starter, signifying there are 10 laps to go. Caution. And the yellow has come out. A crash midway between turns one and two. Oh, and man, it, it was is Kevin fourth, Goodale. Fourth place running, Kevin Goodale. This is just something that the driver hates to see, Jackie. Being in the top five and then spin out, uh, to, to finish a good, to end up not having a good day. And here's where you have to begin to wonder. Just like in Cup, green, white, checker finishes will be in place for this race. The, 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 the thing that's going to be interesting on these restarts, Jackie, is is Rowan going to take the outside or the inside? I believe he will take the inside. But now he knows Pierce is going to stay with him whichever decision he makes. So, one race ago, on a short track, on a quarter mile, it came down to the green-white checker. Let's take a look at what happened at Monadnock Speedway when Ted Christopher used it to his advantage. So on the outside is Rudolph. Christopher goes to the inside, makes it stick. And Ted Christopher, this was about the beginning and the only time that Ted Christopher led all night as he takes the white flag. Eric Rudolph had been, had won the pole position, but that green-white checker dashed the hopes of the New York youngster in scoring his first wheel of modified tour victory. And Ted Christopher came home victorious. Five laps to go. The caution light is out atop the race cut pace car. The field is coming down with Rowan Pennick leading them down. Ryan Priest in the blue car. Priest, what a great start, Jack. Uh, he Rowan. spins and he spins his wheels. Priest does. Gets a little sideways, and that's the break for Rowan Pennick. And now second place is in play. Silk is pushing the pressure back to Priest. Oh, look at Priest starting to bump the heck out of Rowan. What do we expect out of that? The bumper. Three laps to go. Rowan Pennick goes to the inside, looks for the advantage. The door gets slammed, tapping, tapping, banging, looking, desperately wanting to get around the red number 93. This is exciting racing, Jackie. He knows the time is running out. He's coming to two laps to go. Don't be afraid to move a car around. That's part and parcel of NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour Racing. But the question mark is, as the white flag comes out, will Rowan, will Rowan Pennick be able to hold on? Pierce goes to the inside. Priest dive bombs down into turn number one. He gets him sideways, coming out of the corner. Rowan Pennick takes the checkered flag, holds on after a wild turn three Man. and turn four. That was interesting. It impressed me, Rowan Pennick definitely kept his cool. You know, Priest pushed the issue, pushed the issue. But give this guy credit, Jackie. He did a heck of a great job he was, keeping his line. He was sideways, though. It, well, and like Buddy Baker once said, that boy was in an accident. Everybody just forgot to tell him. <laughs> we'll go. get a chance to talk to the winner as he makes his way around the racetrack. Rowan Pennick, victorious here as you look at the final lap. Exciting. Bang, bang, bang. The Riverhead 200 is history. Rowan Pennick, a Keystone driver from the state of Pennsylvania, finds himself in victory lane. And for more, let's go to Kelly Stavitz. And Rowan is celebrating his first ever win in the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. 
Although, Rowan, it was not easy. You had Ryan Priest all over the back of you, but how does it feel to get this first win under your belt? Um, I can't explain the feeling it is to finally get this first uh, tour win under my belt. You know, we've been running it for a couple of years here. We've been struggling uh, this year a bunch. You know, and we just kept plugging away at it, and, uh, you know, we worked hard, and good things come when you work hard. Started ninth, worked your way through traffic, and then had to hold Ryan off. How are those last handful of laps? Yeah, I mean, the car was a little bit of, full, of a handful at the end. We were getting free, and I knew Ryan was good, and uh, uh, we just, you know, Brian, my spotter, did an awesome job, uh, you know, keeping me under control and, and uh, keeping that bottom groove protected, and, you know, it was just uh, clear sailing from there. Congratulations. Thank you very much. First victory is always the sweetest. When it comes at a racetrack like the Riverhead Raceway, it is really good. If you think this was good, be with us next week when we bring you the Town, town Fair Tire 150 from the Half Mile Super Speedway. Yeah, I said Super Speedway. Jackie, Stafford Jackie. Motor Speedway. At least it thinks it is. It'll be awesome racing. Plan to be with us. We'll have more next week. The NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour right here on Versus. Congratulations to Rowan Bennett, winner tonight.